record on this computer and it is now recording. So check this out. Let me share my screen. Share my screen. Hey, and check this out. If you don't follow my YouTube page, make sure you go subscribe to my YouTube page. Every call that I do, I post it on here, all right? In case you wanna go back and just look over any of the videos to get everything down, make sure you subscribe, all right? Pretty good footage, pretty good Pretty good footage, pretty good videos, all right? So check this out. Oh, let me go to my Google Docs. So check this out. I need everybody to understand what RS, RSI really means, the relative strength index. So I'm gonna read it to you. The relative strength index, RSI, is most commonly used to indicate temporarily overbought or oversold conditions in a market. So basically saying, okay, if the market gets too high, that means it's overbought, it has to come back down. If the market gets too low, it's oversold, right? It has to come back up. I want y'all to understand that the market lives for equilibrium, so it must always balance out. And that's what this indicator is here for. An intraday, which means day trading, for its trading strategy can be devised to take advantage of indications from the RSI that a market is overextended and therefore likely to retrace. The RSI is a widely used technical indicator and an oscillator that indicates a market is overbought when the RSI value is over 70 and indicates oversold conditions when RSI readings are under 30, okay? Some traders and analysis prefer to use the more extreme readings of 80 and 20. A weakness of the RSI, this is the con of the RSI, right? I know some of y'all may be depending on the RSI and stochastic, but that's not the only thing you should depend on. You should use it as a clue. So check this out. A weakness of the RSI is that sudden sharp price movements can cause it to spike repeatedly up or down. And thus it is prone to giving false signals. However, if those spikes or falls show a trading confirmation when compared with other signals, it could signal an entry or exit point. So this is a pretty good indicator, but this will not win you the trade. It will only give you a clue. Drop a two in the chat if you understand everything that I just said. This will not win you the trade. It will only give you a clue of what's happening in the market. So for those of you depending strictly on RSI, don't do that, all right? So let me actually show you where the RSI is, right? So on Hourglass, the RSI actually consists of 70 and 30. 70 being the higher line right here and 30 being the lower line right here. So, Anything above 70 is overbought and it must come back down to the middle, right? If I look to the left, look how everything is towards the middle. Everything is towards the middle. Anything that is overbought come, always comes back down to the 50. So I'm gonna repeat it. Anything overbought is above 70. Anything oversold is below 30. Where is 30? It's the lower line, right? It's the lower line right here, okay? This must, this must come down to the middle. This must come up to the middle. It's just the way the market works, all right? Cool, that's the RSI. Now, go read everything else. Now we got the Bollinger Bands. Okay, Bollinger Bands are a form of technical analysis that traders use to plot trend lines. Now, when we talk about trend lines, I went over how to understand the market yesterday. How do we spot a trend line? A trend line is a consistent trend of higher and higher lows and lower and lower highs in the market. Bollinger Bands basically help you indicate that. 
Bollinger bands are a form of technical analysis that traders use to plot trend lines that are two standard deviations away from the simple moving average price of the security. The goal is to help a trader know when to enter or exit a position by identifying when an asset has been overbought or oversold. Bollinger bands were designed by John Bollinger. Hmm, that's crazy. So we have the RSI and it's basically showing you the overbought and oversold conditions. Cool. The Bollinger Band is for entries. And it's showing you when the market is overbought and oversold. So those correlate, right? Bollinger Bands help by signaling, signaling changes in volatility for general steady ranges of a security such as many currency pairs. Bollinger Bands act as relatively clear signals for buying and selling. This can result in stopouts and frustrating losses. These are the cons, so listen carefully. I'm gonna repeat it. This can result in stopouts and frustrating losses. Though, so traders consider other factors when placing trades in relation to the Bollinger Bands. So if you're only relying on the Bollinger Bands, you will not win. Let me repeat that. If you are only relying on the Bollinger Bands, you will not win this trade. Now, let me actually show you what the Bollinger Bands are. Double click on here, this red line. So let me do it like this, all right? Uh, where did I put it at? Uh, will it let me type on here? Sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, it is. It's a red Bollinger Band. Equals sell. All right. Now, equals buy. That's crazy. So it just it just erased it. I guess because it's repopulating every time. So, all right, I'm not even gonna type it. But look, this red line is a Bollinger Band. This means sell. Every time we look at the red Bollinger Band, we think of sell. Every time we look at the green Bollinger Band, it equals buy. Now, let me show you how price actually reacts, right? How price actually reacts to the Bollinger Bands. So we got a red Bollinger. We have our we have our EMA, let's do the middle. And we got our green Bollinger Band, right? Now, the black line that I'm about to use is price. So if price actually comes up to the red Bollinger Band, it will not break this Bollinger Band. What will happen? It will reject off this Bollinger Band. It'll come back down, correct? So look, I'm gonna put an S for a selling position, correct? Now, when price hits this green line, it will not break through. It will reverse and go back towards the resistance, the red Bollinger Band, right? This plays resistance, this plays support, if you understand what support and resistance actually is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a buy. Why it sounds so low? 
I'm confused. Can everybody, can everybody hear me? Drop a three in the chat if you can hear me right now. All right, cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna place a buy right here, correct? Because what's gonna happen, the price, price is gonna reverse back up to here and so on, so on. So I want you to know sometimes that the EMA that's in the middle, it can play support and resistance. So sometimes the EMA may come here it may hit one of these. So this could indicate a buy two, okay? This could indicate a buy two. Now price is actually coming back up here, coming down and boom. You already know it's gonna buy, but price could come here and not break through this EMA, and what's gonna happen? It's gonna sell back down. And this could indicate a sell. All right, now, does everybody understand how price reacts inside of the Bollinger Bands? Let me know, let me know, let me know. Does everybody understand how price reacts in the Bollinger Bands? If you do, say yes. It's pretty simple. All right, now, that was a Bollinger Bands, cool. Now we go to the stochastic oscillator. So the stochastic oscillator is a momentum indicator comparing a particular closing price of a security to a range of its prices over a certain period of time. The sensitivity of the oscillator to market movements is reducible by adjusting that time period or by taking a moving average of the result. It is used to generate overbought and oversold trading signals. Now, this is the third time I've seen overbought and oversold. You can't use all of these alone, but you can use them together to give you a trade, to give you a position in the market. So that should tell you that all the confirmations that I'm about to tell you, you need to use them together in order for you to win the trade. All right, cool. What does the stochastic oscillator tell you? The stochastic oscillator is range bound, meaning it is always between zero and 100. This makes it a useful indicator of overbought and oversold conditions. Traditionally, reading over 80 are considered in the overbought range and readings under 20 are considered oversold. However, these are not always indicative of impending reversals. I just read to you the pros. Now here comes the con. Now here comes the cons, all right? Very strong trends can maintain overbought or oversold conditions for an extended period. Instead, traders should look to changes in the stochastic oscillator for clues about future trend shifts. Okay, key word, it says clues. Now, this doesn't mean, okay, the market is oversold, it's finna buy. No, it's giving you a clue that it could potentially buy. It's giving you a clue that right now the momentum in the market is headed down, but it's not going to be going down for too much longer. Okay, use the indicators as clues. Keyword clues. Now let's 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 go over the stochastic oscillator. Cool. So the stochastic oscillator consists of eighty and it consists of 20, right? Consists of 20. Anything above the 80 is overbought and must come back down to the middle, to the 50. Anything that is oversold must cross the 30 and must come back up 
to the 50. Drop a seven in the chat if you understand the stochastic oscillator and what it is for. All right, so now that y'all understand the basic fundamentals of the market, now I can actually get into the confirmations and how to look for everything, all right? Now let's go to the PowerPoint. Let's go to the PowerPoint. Cash Trap 2.0, okay? So this is the overview, top five scanner in IM, easiest HFS strategy to learn. Five currency pairs. Uh, I'm pretty sure they should be adding more currency pairs on there in the future, but right now we only got a few to work with, right? So when we're trading on pocket options or any of your brokers, you want to make sure the payout percentage is higher than 70%. Cash trout results. This is actually an old PowerPoint. As y'all know, Matty Pips has won way more than 74. Uh, he definitely has a new, he definitely has a new record, right? This is the HFS go. This is the HFS go live schedule. You probably can't even see this, so check this out. I will actually send the schedule in the chat when I'm done with this. Also with the PowerPoint. Now, step one. Look at the arrows. So if you see an up arrow, that means call. Call means buy. Okay. If you see a down arrow, a red arrow, that means put. Put means sell. This is 50 to 60% accuracy. This is the first thing that you look for. You want it to be a check off process. The computer algorithm is already telling you, okay, hey, we're seeing buys, we're seeing sales. So pay attention. Now let's go to the next step. Step two, currency strength meter. The first currency is stronger equals one point for a call. So that means if the primary currency is stronger, that's one point for a buy, AKA a call. If the secondary currency is stronger, that's one point for a put. Put as far as sell, looking for selling positions in the market. If the currencies are the same, it's a call or put, it's either or. 70 to 80% accuracy. Now this is an example. If we are looking at USD CAD, will we be looking for a call or a put? Keep in mind, this is the currency strength meter right here. This is the primary currency and this is the secondary currency. If we was to look at this, y'all let me know in the chat, what are we looking for, a call or a put? Cool, cool. So y'all already starting to catch on. Y'all starting to catch on. Now, step three, look for the crosses on the RSI and the stochastic. If you get a cross up, that's one point for a call, AKA a bop. If you get a cross down, that's one call for a put or for a sell. Now, if we look right here, if we look right here, you can see that the market is obviously overbought and it's crossing back down. You look down here, the market is overbought, it's crossing back down, it's oversold and it's crossing back up. But I'm gonna actually go to Hourglass and show you in real time. I'm gonna show you in real time. So if we're looking for a sale, the market is gonna be up here. Market is gonna be up here. This is overbought, right? If this is 70, the tip of price is at 98. So obviously it got to come back down. So of course it is overbought, but we're looking for the sale. We're looking for the cross. We're looking for the cross. Boom. We're looking for that to happen. And usually what I do when I see a currency pair that I like and I see it all in a great setup, I start at the higher line or the lower line, depending on what position I'm looking at. I will go to my ruler and I would measure down nine.
click right here and I will go to my horizontal line and I will put a green line at the tip of this arrow. I know for a fact when it passes my nine, that price is gone, vice versa. I'm gonna go to a oversold market. I know when price is oversold, why? Because this is my 20, price is at eight, cool. We're looking for the cross. We're looking for the cross up on the 20. That's a confirmation for a buy. But first, if I see the setup, I'm gonna start at my lower line at my 20 and I'm gonna measure up now. Every time it passes my nine, price is gone. Drop a two in the chat if you understand everything I just said. Of course, I'm gonna tell y'all to drop numbers on making sure everybody's engaged. I need to know that y'all are paying attention. Cool, 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 cool. The same thing on the RSI, okay? The same exact thing when it comes to the RSI. I'm not gonna go over it and explain it again because it's the same principle. Anything above the 70, overbought, Anything below the 30 is oversold. We want to see it crossing up, all right? That's one point. Next. The green Bollinger Band is for a call. That's down here. That's for a buy. buy. I already told you, the green Bollinger Band, we're thinking buy. One point for a call, okay? Red Bollinger Band, a sell, a put, that's one point. Now, I want you to pay attention to the point system. Three points is a good trade, so only risk 1% of your account. But check this out, I'm not trying to get three points, I'm trying to get four or five. I want great or amazing, I don't want good. I'm looking for great or amazing, because great and amazing means that I have a higher percentage in the market of winning. I have a higher percentage in the market at winning. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Some of y'all only look for great trades. Some of y'all only look for great trades. Nah, some of y'all only look for good trades, right? So that's probably why y'all lose some trades because you only get three indicators. You only get three clues. Now let's actually go, let's actually go to the chart right now, okay? So we're looking at EuroCAD. We're looking at EuroCAD. So what am I looking at first? I'm looking at the arrow. It says put. So that's basically telling me, okay, the algorithm is telling me that the market is about to sell. Cool. Next, I'm gonna go over here to the currency strength meter. Is the secondary currency appreciating over the primary currency? No, I only have one point, okay? I'm looking for four or five. Let me go to my stochastic. Is price oversold, oversold in this area? No. Is price oversold in this area? No. I would not enter this trade. I'm gonna look for another one, okay? USD CAD, okay. It's calling a call. It's telling me that it's about to buy. First, I got a call. I look at the currency strength meter. The secondary currency is appreciating over the primary currency, so I still got one point. I look at the Bollinger Band, okay. Price is actually rejecting off the Bollinger Band. So that's two points. Green Bollinger Band equals a buy. So I didn't go over this right here. Anytime you see a buy right here and price is at the green Bollinger Band and it's saying call, that's an extra point. Right, so right now we have three points. Stochastic 
Okay, stochastic price is oversold. But what are we looking for? What are we looking for? Price to cross this not. We're looking for price to actually cross this nine right here, right? So it's oversold and we're looking for the market to cross up. This is not oversold yet, but those are four confirmations. Those are four confirmations, all right? Let's go to EU. Now let's go to EuroCAD. This was nine minutes ago. So they called a call right here, right? They called a call right here. So let me explain this trade. Let me explain this trade. These green lines, these green lines are predetermined levels, basically supporting resistance, right? Right, nine pips. To why you use the nine though. All right, so check this out. So I actually, I actually back tested everything because when I was using the simple scalper, I kept, I kept losing. Like it was a point of time where I would get all of my, you know what I'm saying, indicators in line, but I would lose. So I realized that okay, let me, let me go look at my momentum-based indicators because obviously the market wasn't getting enough momentum. It would spike back down. So I tried different numbers. Let me measure up nine. I'm going to answer when it passes this. I tried three first. Three did not work. I tried six. Six did not work. I tried nine and nine worked every single time. I want to say I probably had an 83% chance when I used my nine. Okay, so it's very efficient. So this is what we're looking for as far as entries. When you have everything lined up, and this is just, you know, if you have all of your analysis, you're looking for a rejection of this candle. You're still looking for a great entry. Even though everything is lining up, you wanna make sure that your candlesticks is telling you what it's supposed to be telling you. For example, if it called a buy right here, but it was on this candle, we're not gonna answer it yet. We're going to wait for price to reject off here to shoot back up then we would enter. By the time that happens, price probably will be crossed above the nine on the stochastic and above the nine on the RSI. Okay, let's go to another setup. Let's go to another setup. Let's go to another setup. Okay, right here is a perfect, right here is a perfect setup. I'm not gonna lie, right here is a perfect setup. I see put, cool. Price is at the Bollinger Band and support, I mean, and resistance. So I already have three points, okay? Your USD is calling a put, boom. I don't get a point on the currency meter because it's calling for a sale. The USD should be stronger. A sale popped up right here, boom. That's four points. This stochastic is oversold, I mean, overbought, and the RSI is overbought. Now I'm just waiting for it to cross down on my nine, okay? So, I zoom in, I'm still waiting for this counter to form right here. I'm still waiting on this rejection. Still waiting on this rejection. So I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna measure up my knobs. I'm gonna measure up my knobs. I'm gonna measure up my knobs. Waiting for everything to cross. Waiting for everything to cross. Still gotta be patient. We got about two minutes. Remember, if you're trading on a five minute time frame, we're going for three minute trades. If you're trading on a five minute time frame, we're going for three minute trades. We wait for these to cross. Waiting for this to cross, waiting for this to cross. But so far, while we waiting on this to cross, can y'all drop a five in the chat if y'all been understanding everything that I've been teaching so far? Cool. 
cool, 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 cool. I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna have to play the waiting, the waiting game sometimes. You gotta be patient. As you can see, on my stochastic is crossing. It's crossing. Cool. That's one confirmation. We got about one minute left. Let's see what happens on this next counter. Let's see what happens on this next candle. Now, some of y'all would have been anxious and hopped in for 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Y'all probably would have cleared. But I'm not gonna lie, when you jump in for 30 and 45 seconds, you're not giving price enough time to actually fluctuate. Unless you're using the golden nugget. Now the golden nugget, you can do that, but you're not giving it enough time. See what happened when it didn't cross the nine and reject it, right? So if you was actually in this trade for the time you was in it, probably wouldn't have cleared if you would have hopped in too early. And think about it, we always wanna hop in at close to the beginning of the next candle. But you wanna wait till these cross though. So let's see what's gonna happen next. Let's see what's gonna happen next. So that's crazy. It repopulated. Everything repopulated. It didn't cross the line and everything repopulated. That's crazy. That's crazy. Drop a fire emoji in the chat if that's crazy. The nine is powerful. It didn't cross the nine, it rejected back, right? But like I said, look, see what happened? That's crazy. They even changed the whole trade up because it didn't cross that certain area. This is something that I actually been back testing. So if you want to be sure in winning, make sure you be patient. Don't enter too early. Wait till the time is right. All right. All right, cool, cool, cool. So that's pretty much the end of this training. Uh, does anybody have any questions or concerns? Let me know, let me know, let me know. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Can you briefly go over the indicators, uh, over the indicators four and five? All right, cool. All right, cool. So, uh, Donisha, were you talking about the uh, stochastic in RSI? Yes. All right, cool. So your upper, your upper indicator right here, this is the stochastic. This is the RSI. The stochastic consists of 80, which is the higher line, and 20, which is the lower line, okay? Anytime price is overbought, it'd be above the 80. Right, this is the this is the eighty. Okay. Anytime price is overbought, it'll be it'll be up in this area. Right, anything above this area. Now, whenever price is overbought, it must come back down. So what we're looking for is a cross on this red line right here. Right, but like I said, we want to wait because we want it to cross the nine. How do we measure out our nine? We go over here to the left. We go to our technical analysis tool, which is the ruler. We click and then we scroll all the way down the knot. Then I'm gonna place a green line. All right, that's what we're waiting for. Now it's vice versa. And this is for a sale, okay? This is for a sale, not for a buy. Anything 
below the 20 because the stochastic lower line consists of 20, right? Anything below the 20 is oversold. So we're looking for price to actually cross back up on this line right here, up. And we're looking for it to cross on the nine. Okay, and I want you to understand that it's vice versa when we're talking about the stochastic and the RSI, they do the same thing. But with the RSI, the higher line consists of 70 and this line consists of 30. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. So does anybody have any uh, questions or concerns? What's your YouTube channel again? I'm gonna go watch this again. Cool, I'm gonna pull it up real quick. I'm gonna pull it up. Hey man, this is my YouTube channel, uh, No Face Productions. Go subscribe. I got the golden nugget strategy on here. I got simple scalper. I got market structure training. If you guys have Gold Cup, go watch that, right? Uh, that training was actually hosted by Miss Gold Cup herself, Lex. She hosts the, uh, the golden hour sessions. Cool, 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 cool. Facts. What's the best training? Uh, the best training was my harmonic scanner trainer. I think they got like 300, you know, they got 321 views. But nah, you definitely, I mean, you definitely came in. I mean, it's a tie between the uh, simple scalper and the uh, golden nugget. Where's the best training of the breakdown uh, of the breakdown of another product? I'm confused. I meant next, Jordan. I don't know why I keep saying best. I meant when's the next training for the breakdown of another product the way you did Cash Trout 2.0? Oh, I'll probably run one next week. That's cool with y'all. I'll probably run one next week. All right, but if y'all got some valuable information from this call, hey man, drop some off. Hey man, drop whatever y'all wanna drop in the chat. Drop a random emoji. Drop a random emoji. Let me uh stop recording.